And today, it is my great honor to be your host for this, the virtual awards ceremony of the 2021 Eminent Caribbean Juris Awards. Conceived by the CCG Academy for Law, the Eminent Caribbean Juris Awards focuses on jurists who, through their life's work, have made exemplary contributions to Caribbean society. So today, we recognize and to celebrate the outstanding achievements of 34 pioneering Caribbean women jurists. And what a better time to do so than on March 8th, 2022, International Women's Day. Unique in many ways, the Pioneering Caribbean Women Jurists Project was launched on the 12th of October, 2021, with the publication of a book which chronicles and memorializes the contributions of the honorees and was followed by broadcast of video profiles of these women so that even after today's celebration, this educational content will be accessible to all. I now have the distinct pleasure to introduce the Honorable Mr. Justice Adrian Saunders, President of the Caribbean Court of Justice, as he welcomes us on this special occasion. Greetings. I am pleased to welcome you all in honor of 34 of our pioneering Caribbean women jurists. I commend the Academy, its chair, the Honorable Mr. Justice Winston Anderson, and the co-convener of this project, the Honorable Madam Justice Raj Notley, for their leadership of this important endeavor, which celebrates the achievements and contributions of these exceptional women. Heartfelt congratulations must be extended to all the honorees. As I do so, I also recognize the stellar contributions of the myriad other women and women jurists from the Caribbean and the diaspora who have all helped to shape the region and by extension, the world. Their selfless endeavors, hard work, determination and leadership have made a tremendous and positive impact and laid a worthy foundation upon which generations to come can and will build. These great women have lent their voice, their skills, and their expertise to the struggles of the vulnerable and the marginalized. They have advocated for equality, good governance under the rule of law, and for a just society. They have excelled in their respective fields and they have set standards worthy of emulation. Their lives and accomplishments are an unmatched source of inspiration to generations, especially to women and girls. Individually and collectively, they have set in motion momentous ripples that cascade through time and geography. As we applaud the many successes of these honorees, we are now challenged to commit ourselves to ending all forms of discrimination against women and girls. When women and girls are lifted up, the entire society rises. The meaningful participation of women in every facet of decision-making must no longer be relegated to the status of an, of an exception but be recognized as the imperative that it is. In the words of former United States Supreme Court Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg, and I quote, women belong 
to all places where decisions are being made. It should not be that women are the exception. We now present the Honorable Mr. Justice Winston Anderson, Chairman of the Pioneering Caribbean Women Jurists Project. There can be no society without a shared memory of its history, where it has been, what are its core values and aspirations, who have been its architects. The Eminent Caribbean Jurist Awards was conceptualized in 2019 to recognize and celebrate those outstanding jurists who by dint of their brilliance, hard work, and determination have made a consequential contribution to Caribbean society. The 2021 installation of these awards pays homage to pioneering Caribbean women jurists who have built and are building the Caribbean society through their contributions to legal activism, adjudication, corporate governance, education, politics, and public service. These are women who have shattered glass ceilings and who have blazed an inspirational trail for the younger generation and indeed for all of us to follow. The Honorable Madam Justice Maureen Raginoth Lee, co-chair of the Pioneering Caribbean Women Jurists Project, will now address us. In the two years that I have had the pleasure of co-chairing this project with my colleague, Justice Winston Anderson, Judge of the Caribbean Court of Justice and Chair of the CCJ Academy for Law, I have become accustomed to hearing these words, pioneering, remarkable, outstanding, exceptional, trailblazing. These are words that have been so aptly used to describe the 34 pioneering Caribbean women jurists whom we honor today. We gather virtually, still in the midst of a pandemic, to celebrate these pioneering Caribbean women, their extraordinary stories, challenges, and accomplishments. These remarkable women are pioneers in the truest sense of the word. They grew up in different parts of the Caribbean. Many overcame poverty and other serious obstacles. They were determined to become the best that they could be. They used their knowledge and achievements in the law as a platform to serve their peoples, their countries, and the region with passion, strength, and integrity, values frequently identified in Caribbean women. As a Caribbean woman, I join with my sisters throughout the region to express sincere gratitude and appreciation to every one of these pioneering Caribbean women jurists. You each blaze a trail for us to follow. We salute you. And now, we have a message from our key sponsor. It is an honor and a privilege for the Caribbean Development Bank to join forces with the Caribbean Court of Justice, two critical regional institutions advancing the Caribbean people's promise and dreams for social, economic, political, and judicial development. We are indeed proud to partner with you to recognize the impact, accomplishments, and legacies of women trailblazers in our region whose history has been relegated to the margins for far too long. On behalf of the bank's president, management, and staff, we extend our heartfelt congratulations to all 34 distinguished honorees. We congratulate the Caribbean Court of Justice, which is led by Honorable Mr. Justice Adrian Saunders, and its Academy of Law, led by the Honorable Mr. Justice Winston Anderson, and co-convener of this eminent pioneering women's jurist project, the Honorable Madam Justice Maureen Raginot Lee, on this historic initiative. Today, the world commemorates International Women's Day, recognizing the courage and determination of women in positions of leadership and ordinary women who have made significant contributions to their societies. Women make up half of our population, and it is commendable that as development partners, we have taken the time to properly document and recognize pioneering women's jurists whose contributions have been felt in every sector, community, and society in the Caribbean and around the world. 
promoting gender equality and women's representation in public institutions such as the judiciary is unquestionably enshrined in the charters of our regional institutions and is central to our efforts to transform our region's trajectory. This evening, we are proud. We raise our voices in unison to express our gratitude to all our awardees for laying the groundwork for your sacrifice, commitment, passion, and selflessness, which transcends time and space and will be felt by future generations. We are a region indebted to you, strengthened by you, and inspired to continue to serve courageously because of you. Now, it's time to begin our presentations to these 34 phenomenal women. Our first category is dedicated to posthumous awards. As a mark of respect for these pioneers who have left us, we pause in remembrance. These seven women come from four categories. Heads of government, the judiciary, legal activism, and outstanding legal practitioners. Among them are two early pioneers, Iris de Freitas Brazau and Elizabeth Bourne Hollands. The Caribbean's first female Prime Minister, Dame Eugenia Charles. Trinidad and Tobago's first woman magistrate, Gladys Ramsaran. The first female Queen's Council in the Eastern Caribbean, Dame Bernice Lake. Daisy Chambers, the first woman to become a solicitor in Jamaica. And Dana Sitahal, a fearless prosecutor. It is with great pride that we now introduce Dr. Carla Barnett, Secretary General of the Caribbean Community. Her Excellency Paula May Weeks, President of the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago, Honorable Mia Moore Motley, Prime Minister of Barbados, Honorable Mr. Justice Adrian Saunders, President of the Caribbean Court of Justice, Honorable Mr. Justice Winston Anderson, Chairman of the Pioneering Caribbean Women Juris Project and Judge of the Caribbean Court of Justice, other Honorable Justices of the Caribbean Court of Justice, Sir Hilary Beckles, Vice Chancellor, University of the West Indies, distinguished pioneers, and ladies and gentlemen. The recognition of those who have contributed to the development of the Caribbean ethos in any field is always an occasion for celebration. It is even more praiseworthy when that appreciation is accorded to those who have had to struggle against the status quo and entrenched views, as well as discrimination. This second volume in the eminent Caribbean jury series focuses on women jurists who, through their life's work, have made exemplary contributions to Caribbean society. It recognizes and celebrates the contribution of Caribbean women judges and other legal practitioners and offers examples for young lawyers to emulate and aspire to supersede. There can be no better examples for our young female lawyers to follow than this pantheon of pioneers. In these critical times in our region, it is good to tell the stories of those who came before. It is good to inspire young people to step forward and take risks that often come with working to make positive change in our region and in our world. The can-do philosophy and the attendant drive to succeed are the bedrock which propelled these icons to scale summits once thought unattainable. These are Caribbean women of whom we are all justly proud. Some of these women became lawyers at a time when it was still unusual. Indeed, sometimes worthy of a newspaper headline that a woman had actually entered the legal profession. By showcasing these exemplary women jurists, including the region's first female prime minister, and first female Chief Justice. We must thank the Caribbean Court of Justice Academy for Law for its efforts to create a foundation for recognizing the work of individuals who make strong contributions to the development of Caribbean society and people through their accomplishments in the legal field. As the educational arm of the Caribbean Court of Justice, 
The Academy for Law has done exceedingly well in selecting these 34 women from across the Caribbean who are honored in this book. In addition to being eminent jurists, these are women who are or were also heads of state or government, law professors, corporate lawyers, judges, diplomats, and more. I commend Mr. Justice Anderson and his team and look forward to their next project. I thank you. Well, I mean, I was extremely touched and humbled, actually, because um, I have loved the law with my whole heart. I have loved my region uh, with my whole heart. And I have belonged, I've had one foot, I suppose, in the Caribbean and one foot in the UK. But, you know, since I was um, 19, I've been coming backwards and forwards uh, from the region. I, I was qualified as a barrister in the UK in 1977. And then in 1978, I became a barrister both in Antigua and Barbuda. I was called to the bar there. And then I went home to Dominica and was called there. And for my whole career, I have been um, a, a Caribbean lawyer working in the UK, but also strongly attached to my region of birth. And I, I have family in almost all the islands <laughs> in the Caribbean, which is, you know, so much like all of us, isn't it? And uh, my sister uh, lives in Trinidad. So from 1978, I would be coming backwards and forwards uh, to uh, Trinidad often. And of course, a number of us who qualified at the same time from the Caribbean, when I qualified, you couldn't become qualified in the Caribbean. We all had to go to England. So we had friends throughout the region. So if I look at now some of the people who are judges, some of the people who are attorney generals, that we were the same bunch of young lawyers, Caribbean lawyers. So I think uh, to be honored in this way uh, by uh, the profession I love and the region I come from and the, therefore the people I love, it's a very, very special moment. And you'll know that when I became a barrister, I think, I think it was something like uh, 90, either 93 or 97% of the bar was white Anglo-Saxon Protestant male and about 0.01% was black female. So to, and you know, women when in the 1970s, um, women at the bar were still seen as really unusual and strange. Um, and so to see all these fantastic Caribbean women highlighted, it's wonderful. You know, you have three, have three Dominican women that you have, are, um, celebrating, which is special for us. We're a small island. But look, you've got the fantastic Mia Motley, and you know, we had our Eugenia Charles, you had brilliant women. And so I think it's really important, and I'm not counting me in this, but the, the women who really should be known by other jurists within our region, both female and male because I think our men need to know how many wonderful uh, jurists have they been blessed with as a result of the contribution women have been able to make. And, you know, for so many, you're so busy just working, you don't think about any of these things. And I've been incredibly touched because you don't think about it uh, when young, really young um, uh, girls, say, oh, I didn't realize you could do that. If she can do that, I can do that too. So I think why I think this project is so special is the generation of women you will probably be celebrating. Many of us were told that that which we had done was impossible to do. And therefore to be surrounded by women of such talent and energy and warmth. These are, they're not just good jurists. Um, they're wonderful women. They're wonderful, warm, clever, 
engaging, committed, public spirited women. So to celebrate that, I think that's quite, quite special. And I have to tell you, I was incredibly touched to be included uh, in their number. Our eminent Caribbean Jurist Gallery will now feature three categories. We begin with heads of state the highest representatives of our sovereign states. These women embody the spirit of our nations. Her Excellency Paula May Weeks. Her Excellency Dame Sandra Mason. Her Excellency Ertha Pascal Truillo. Heads of government. These women have led the executive branch. We honor them for their contributions to good governance. The Honorable Mia Motley. The Honorable Kamla Passat Bissessa. The Honorable Claudette Worley. High National Office. In their leading roles, these awardees have made a positive impact on national development. The Honorable Charlene Cartwright Robinson. The Honorable Dame Billy Miller. The Honorable Dame Constance Mitchum. First of all, when I heard about the project, I thought it was an exciting project. You know, I didn't give much thought to the question of whether I would have been selected. And so it was a great honor when I was told that I was one of the honorees. And I felt privileged and humbled you know, to have been so considered. And, you know, it gave me a sense that some of the work that I had accomplished, you know, received recognition. Just the opportunity to serve and serve the wider region, um, that to me is sort of the greatest honor that one can have. The judiciary. These honorees have been responsible for the interpretation and application of the law to guarantee legal certainty and to protect the rights and liberties of all. The Honorable Dame Anita Allen. The Honorable Madam Justice Desiree Bernard. The Honorable Madam Justice Ina Collymore Woodstock. Her Ladyship, the Chief Justice Dame Janice Pereira. The Honorable Madam Justice Cynthia Volston Montnor. The Honorable Madam Chief Justice Zayla McCalla. I think it is important for women to be recognized. There's no question about it. But I think the more important thing is for us as women to see ourselves not in a, in a bucket of women, but to see ourselves in the context of the, of the entire society and to make sure that when we do excel, or if we are recognized, that, that we're recognized not because we're women, but because we have made a contribution to our society in whatever sphere that is worthy of recognition. So it's not so much about gender as it is about um, our ability to, to positively impact uh, lives in whatever way we can. I really was honored and you know it's, it's strange because I mean people award me for different things and people you know but I felt like I was being awarded by my by my peers by my my profession my brothers and sisters in the law and that meant that was significant for me and it was the first time in I think anything that I've received in which I read I was touched by it I really was and I thought you know because we work yeah we work in our lives and we do things and we follow our passion and our purpose but to be recognized by those, because the law is in my soul, yeah? that's, that's my sort of core. And to be recognized by your own people, by your own professional family, to me is just one of the greatest honors that I could, I could ever have. International and regional. These women have distinguished themselves beyond borders, offering representation and setting standards worthy of emulation. The Right Honorable Patricia Scotland, Her Excellency Dr. Manorma Suknandan. Legal Education and Scholarship. 
Whether clarifying the law or suggesting pathways for the law to follow, these jurists have had a significant influence on the development of the law in our region. Professor Rosemary Bell Antoine Norma Ford Professor Velma Newton Corporate World In this sphere, our jurists have contributed not only to making businesses sustainable, but to helping them flourish. They are a testament to how the legal sector has wide-ranging economic impact. Sharon Christopher Sandra Osborne The distinguished professor, Sir Hilary Beckles, Vice-Chancellor of the University of the West Indies, will now offer congratulations on this momentous occasion. Our distinguished president of the Caribbean Court of Justice, Justice Saunders, his colleague jurist, distinguished Secretary General of CARICOM, Her Excellency Dr. Carla Barnett, distinguished heads of states and government officials, Her Excellency Paul LeMay Weeks, all distinguished ladies and gentlemen. It was an historic moment indeed in 2019 when our beloved Caribbean Court of Justice launched the eminent Caribbean Jewish Award project. It was an excellent example of the development of the architecture of institutional nation building. Even more commendable was when the court designated the 2022 award a tool to celebrate the pioneering Caribbean women jurors. As an historian, I'm aware that in our struggle for liberation, to distance ourselves from the colonial scaffold, that that struggle was rooted largely in the courage, the commitment, the confidence, and the consciousness of our women. Colonialism, we know, imposed deeper pain and extracted greater value from our women. This made them, in turn, natural rebels. The title of one of my earlier books in which I explored the search for justice, equity, equality, and dignity within the Caribbean community. These 34 awardees are all in their own right and in their own way, natural rebels. They are all perfectly positioned to pursue the pedagogy and the principles of truth. I am proud that the UWI, a social justice institution, has played a critical role in the journey of our women justices. We in the University of the West Indies, we stand shoulder to shoulder with the Caribbean Court of Justice. We stand shoulder to shoulder with the legacy of our women jurists who have broken through to give judicial reflection upon the search for justice. Our women have taken up the baton in the pursuit of higher education, of professional advancement, and it is only right and natural that they should find themselves sitting in prominent positions within our judicial system. Congratulations to all of our jurors, to the Caribbean Court of Justice, to our distinguished president, and in particular, the 34 awardees of 2022. Well, when I first, <laughs> when I first heard about it, I felt undeserving because, you know, I never, made a note of all the things that I had done and all the litigation, the public law litigation that I had done. And and um, so, so I said, what? But then when I had to 
help prepare for the for the biography that was done and I started to dig it up and I said hell there's a lot of stuff going on that went on I should say so after a while I I I said oh okay this is good <laughs> I appreciate it I was and then I, I I got thrilled I said this is really good I am really pleased to get this award I I, I, I liked it because it encapsulates everything and, and it's wonderful, and I, I'm really happy about it. The Honorable Alex Boyd Knights. The legislature, also honorary in this category, earned the title of Speaker Emerita after presiding over the House of Assembly in the Commonwealth of Dominica for a monumental 20 years. Public service. Jurists provide services in the public interest to advance safe, fair and just societies. One of our honorees dedicated her professional life to working in the public sector, while another used her legal expertise to practice law in the spirit of public service. The Honorable Dame Justice Monica Joseph, Her Excellency Lois Michelle Young, Legal activism, actually described as a legal reformer par excellence, our second awardee in this category, like so many of our honorees tonight, entered the legal profession when women were few in number. She dedicated her long and distinguished career to the public sector. The Honorable Shirley Miller. It is a distinct honor to introduce our feature speaker, Her Excellency Paula May Weeks, President of the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago. The Honorable Mr. Justice Adrian Saunders, President of the Caribbean Court of Justice. Your Excellency Carla Barnett, Secretary General of CARICOM. The Honorable Justices Winston Anderson and Maureen Rajnoth Lee, Co-Chairs of the Pioneering Caribbean Women Jurist Project and judges of the CCJ, other Honorable Justices of the Caribbean Court of Justice, Sir Hilary Beckles, Vice-Chancellor of the University of the West Indies, distinguished pioneers, ladies and gentlemen. I am honored to address you at this virtual Pioneering Caribbean Women Jurist Award Ceremony, which fittingly falls on International Women's Day, a day established officially by the United Nations in 1977 to commemorate the achievements, triumphs, and progress of women. It is indeed a pity that circumstances deny us gathering and enjoying the all too infrequent camaraderie special to groups of women folk. I was looking forward to meeting and celebrating with my fellow honorees, many of whom are special sources of inspiration to me. But I comfort myself with the certainty that our collective spirit brings us together in the warmth and fellowship of sisterhood. On this occasion, I will be bold and speak on behalf of the entire cohort of honorees and express our unreserved appreciation and high regard for the esteemed Caribbean Court of Justice Academy of Law, which has seen it fit to bestow on us this great honor, and gratitude for the stewardship of its co-chairs, Justices Maureen Rajnoth Lee and Winston Anderson. The entire process Selecting the awardees, compiling and editing biographies, launching the pioneering Caribbean women jurist publication, promoting the project, videotaping discrete contributions, and all else that culminates in this ceremony took a not inconsiderable amount of time, energy, and resources. The pulling off of the second edition of the imminent Caribbean jurist series, and more so amid a pandemic, can only be described as a colossal labor of love. And the region, my fellow honorees and I, are eternally grateful. I mention the region because we in the Caribbean are notoriously averse to documenting our stories. In addition to this year's award ceremony, the CCJ's ambitious and ultimately successful publication offers in a digestible format the historical and authentic account of female change makers whose common discipline is law, even though they have made waves in every profession and sector. They have contributed not only to jurisprudence, but also business, social work, 
Economic Development and Diplomacy. This book shines a welcome spotlight on those who have been trailblazers of their time in an area traditionally dominated by men and who have carved a path for current and upcoming generations of women lawyers. In recognizing and rewarding their contributions, the CCJ highlights the representation of the fairer sex in our judicial and legal systems and encourages and promotes gender equality. On this International Women's Day, no stronger and clearer signal could be sent than celebrating the achievements of the female jurists of the region being acknowledged today. To say that I'm fascinated and awed by their life stories is an understatement. My colleagues represent the length and breadth of Caribbean society, a captivating medley of backgrounds, cultures, worldviews, and lived experiences. Some of these extraordinary women have had to overcome various social biases, poverty, setbacks, betrayals, and disappointments to become trailblazers in their chosen field and all made sacrifices along the way. They are sheroes who at great personal cost and of times during tumultuous periods made sterling contributions to the development of their judiciaries and by extension, their nation. They epitomize the possibility and potential that exist when women are given the opportunity to be educated and pursue their passions. Pioneering women are no strangers to us in the Caribbean and the accomplishment of the intrepid women whose intimate stories are set out in the text are testament to the wealth of talent, skill, and ingenuity that resides within the Caribbean region, where women have long distinguished themselves, and not only in the legal profession. I call to mind Rose Leon, the first female minister of government in Jamaica, Dame Hilda Bino, Governor General of Grenada from 1967 to 1972, and Elma Francois, Trinbegonian domestic worker and revolutionary firebrand. Their exploits demonstrate that women are well suited to lead, adjudicate, advise, and represent in all spheres, just as ably as their male counterparts. Although many of the cultural stereotypes of their era have not been completely debunked, their example made it easier for women of following generations to fulfill their greatest potential. They are the giants on whose shoulders we stand, and we are forever in their debt. Throughout my own career, I never felt that my gender limited what I could accomplish, and I owe much of that to the inspiration of women international, regional, and local. I remember taking early note of Dame Hilda's achievements. Not only was she a female governor, but also a pioneer in education and medicine. The opportunity to gain insight from the experiences of others, be motivated by their narratives, and discover what has been and can be realized despite the most challenging circumstances are among the primary reasons for this work. While there can be no true substitute for lived experience, it can be instructive for those who follow to look towards their forerunners for valuable lessons and direction. At the age of 20, Dame Eugenia Charles traveled to Grenada and re-entered secondary school, in uniform, mind you, to obtain certification in Latin, a prerequisite for the admission to the study of law. An object lesson in humility, determination, sacrifice, and single-mindedness, to be sure. Arthur Pascal Truyo stepped forward to accept the interim presidency of Haiti in that country's time of need, when many men declined the call of duty for fear of their lives, a demonstration of courage and patriotism in daunting circumstances. Jamaica's first female Chief Justice, the Honorable Zyla Rowena McCalla, was forced to make a detour in her dream of becoming a lawyer in order to help support her siblings after her father's death, proof positive that bumps in the road do not mean the end of a journey. These women came from a wide range of social contexts, traditions, and family structures, but the common thread weaving their stories together is that of tenacity, resolve, and an unswerving pursuit of their goals. Readers of these biographies will come away with more than just a chronological account of their lives. They will harvest a nuanced perspective 
of what contributed to their achievements, success, and triumphs, and how these were arrived at despite setbacks and challenges. The deep dive into the experiences and careers of these very different women will resonate with many, whether at the beginning, mid-course, or close to the end of their life's work. Some will be emboldened to stay the course despite seemingly insurmountable difficulties and challenges. Others will expand their vision for themselves in the professional arena. And there will be those who simply feel an immense sense of pride in the feats that they and their sisters have been able to accomplish over the years. True progress must be capable of measurement. And the pioneering Caribbean woman jurist book is a fair yardstick of how far we have come in doing away with biases and cultural norms which hinder gender equality in the judicial and legal field, as well as informing the work that still needs to be done. I believe that these awards and the associated publication serve to advance the progress of women in the region. I am humbled and proud to have been included in such an endeavor, and once more thank the CCJ Academy for Law and congratulate my fellow honorees for their remarkable achievements and lives well lived. I thank you. So I think it's been a real blessing to be able to have this profession. And um, I am eternally grateful for everyone who taught me, but I'm also eternally grateful to all my sisters um, who are participating in this uh, because they have contributed to the pattern of um, the legal profession, not just in the region, but um, globally. And I'm extraordinarily proud of my region, really proud. As we come to the end of this virtual award ceremony for our pioneering Caribbean women jurists, we hope that you enjoyed sharing this auspicious occasion with these trailblazers. Indeed, we thank each of them for their graciousness and generosity in accepting their award and facilitating the publication of the book of biographical essays and the production of video profiles, which have now become part of the historical records in the Caribbean. Of course, the scope of this undertaking required the support of a considerable number of persons throughout the region. Distinguished persons from diverse backgrounds wholeheartedly gave their time and expertise to make this a reality. And for this, the CCJ Academy for Law is sincerely grateful. Most importantly, at a time when we could not gather in person.